Take care about nature. After last year's survival action. If you mess up your bow breaks, you lose everything. Myself and Julius should do a rematch. So Julius, you're challenged. This is the bow making battle 2.0. In the previous episode, Dylan and Julius camped out for three days, crafting bows with axe and knife. And today, the master bowyer comes in to tell us all about bows and their making. And to be the judge on who made the best bow. Where do you want to go then? The judge has arrived. Somewhere over here. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Alright, put the rack out there anyway. Yeah, the judge. Thanks very much. It's great to be invited onto your channel with this in mind. Uh, my name is Jack Pinson. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a bowyer. And here's some of my wares there. I'm a master bowyer with the traditional craft guild of Bowyers and Fletchers, which is a UK-based guild. I did a four and a half year apprenticeship with my master, Don Adams, who trained me in the longbow making that he used to do. Most of the examples on the rack here are target longbows. So I specialise. I make target longbows and historical war bows, which is what the, the big one on the end is, uh, and a historical pattern drover's bow, which is a lighter draw weight but full compass bow. So the difference between, the difference between target bows and full compass bows is that a target bow has a handle, a riser, a thicker, stiff section in the centre, whereas a, a war bow or a full compass bow or a drover's bow, they're all ways of saying the same thing, they, are, they bend through the whole length of the bow including the handle, first of all. It's got sapwood on the back of the bow and heartwood on the belly of the bow. And I've got antler knocks put on, natural shape ones. Anyway, um, yeah, there's no thicker section in the handle at all. You can maybe see that, you can maybe see that closer up mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas a good, ex a, a, an extreme example of one with a handle is something like that. See the way it's thicker? Mm -hmm. in, this, in right uh, Coming in about here and out again. Mm -hmm. That's the riser and that's what distinguishes the handle from the limbs. Whereas this doesn't have that. I suppose the difference is you gain efficiency because all of the timber is working. Yeah. And you sacrifice a little bit of stability in your hand. So for uh, a Victorian or Georgian era tar uh, Olympic target bows, they favoured the, uh, the riser, the thicker section in the centre, for the stability while yeah, shooting. Yeah. Now, these are all stored with the string off the bow but yeah. just so that everybody important. knows yeah. that you don't keep a wooden bow strung while you're not using it. That's how, that's what it looks like while strung. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I've got, so they're rated at draw length and draw weight. So for example, the next one up here is 30 pounds at 28 as well. Uh, they're mostly drawn to 28 inches and I can make them to your required draw length and weight and requirements. Yeah. That's what yeah. my job as a bowyer is. To yeah. match the bow to the archer. Yeah, so from here on on the rack, they're all laminates, so that's layers glued together. Um, and you can, I, I select the timbers to match the, the tension and compression qualities of the timber. Now you have the same forces going on in the self bow, but you don't have the option of really layering up different layers, mm -hmm. except maybe in yew wood, which is the prime and prized bow wood in, Europe, in the European mm -hmm. context for, for long bows. It's much harder to work in general than a mean wood, a white wood. Mm -hmm. And so if you're starting out, I always say to people, try it on ash or elm or hazel. So what I'm going to do is shoot this one first to see how what it looks like. Yeah. This is a bow I made. It's a used self bow. It's not, not, it, not entirely comparable to an ash self bow, but it's a similar draw weight. So this is the arrow I've chosen for the test. It's a Mongolian blunt for target shooting. Horn uh, blunt end on and then Nice little horn plates to make the knock bound in place. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you go. Come on. Don't want you in front there in case it breaks. Good lad. It's not so much about where the arrow goes; it's more about how the bow performs. But how do you judge that? By your target, I suppose. Which I checked it there, 15 meters or 15 paces, something like that. Yeah. So a bit low, but it went pretty quickly, didn't it? It did. Yeah. 
Yeah, the right guy to, to show us what to do and what not to do. <laughs> well, this is the next thing, isn't it? So I hand you over the... The big moment. The big moment. Okay. There sure. you go. Two bows. Wow, okay. First impressions, right? Yeah, you, you've looked at the character of the timber and worked it into the shape, both of you. Got a gnarly knot in the handle both because, again, they were cut from the same stave. Um, and I can see that you've each gone for a different design of bow. A flat bow in one case and a narrower, deeper bellied bow in the other case. And left nice bits of material extra around the twisty bits of grain. Uh, that's good, yeah. Yeah, so following the grain around the knots. I usually mark them with a, a center line and one inch up for the handle and two, three inches down for the bottom of the handle. And then I know automatically straight away which is up and down, just for ease of use when I'm making them, making it when these are in production. But I'm just, I just have to, I have to look at this and guess now. I could be wrong, but I think that's that way up. Yeah, it's nice. So the taper's there on the plan view and on the side view as well, allowing for knots and twists, uh, uh, over allowance there. Well, we'll see, see what the tiller's like anyway. Yeah, it's nice. And then it's rounded off, softened on the corners and that's good. The less uh, tension you have in corners, the better you, the better chance of success and avoiding chrysal frets you have. So that's a good, that's a good, good set of tapers, I think. Uh, and then we look at this again. So wider, the other bow, the flat bow now, and therefore um, narrower when you look at it side on. Big wide handle that doesn't need to be so wide. It might have a bit of finesse if for comfort down the line because it sort of forces that knuckle out a bit. That's okay. That's personal preference to a, to a point. I'll, I'll let you away with that. Yeah. Whoever it is, yeah. Um, and you have an then, idea already. <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, Don't it's, be spoiled. Don't it's be very spoiled. hard. I'm not going to go. For, I'll guess at the end or some other time. There's an, a thing that's happened on this that hasn't happened on that is the back of the bow <laughs> is not chased down to one growth ring. The traditional and accepted knowledge and of of a back of a self bow should be one growth ring. Uh, what I mean by that is the annular rings on the tree, you've know, got to leave one exposed. If you cut through them and violate one, basically, by slicing through it, you potentially introduce a weak spot where grain can lift up and break the bow. So, usually it's one growth ring on the back. This one has it, and you can see that by the cambium layer still in evidence. And a bit of charcoal gone on there as well for marking, that's good. Good to know that it's been eyed up nice and straight overall, bearing in mind the vagaries of the timber as well. So I'm going to brace this one. I'm not responsible if it breaks. Well, I pretty much am. Okay. You are, yeah. Then it's yeah. all your fault. Then yeah. we made the best bows and yeah. you, you messed so up. So we, right. <laughs> we okay. start easy, yeah? We start easy. Yeah, yeah, so we're not going to go full draw straight away. Fair enough. But yeah, warm it up and everything else. So I'm looking at the flat bow now. As an, I love that little flick in the bottom limb tip. That's nice for cast. Bracing height. So the first thing is look at bracing height. It's a bit low right now, but that's okay because it's a work in progress. I can, we can shorten the length of the string. The fist mill measurement is a rule of thumb of how high you might brace the bow. The tiller distance, which is a given point measurement here and here, looks pretty even, which is very nice to see. Well, I have my tillering stick here as well, so I'll do that. So we'll come back to, let's say, well, I got it 20, I got 20 inches marked there, so that's at 20 inches. There's a, it's very stiff through here, but mm, not, well, not very stiff, it's just because it's got a twist in as well, which makes it tricky. That's nicely bending, maybe a little bit too much of the tip there, but you can probably adjust that. The bottom limb needs to be slightly stiffer usually because it's slightly shorter, so that's okay. Probably needs a little bit of tweaking and finessing, but still functional. So, okay. Have either of you tillered, not tillered to your full draw length? No full draw, both of us. No. Okay, so it's danger zone right here. Yeah. Yeah. This is like but on... on uh... But unmarked uh, territory. Yeah, okay, from, fine. From here on Good out, to know. Yeah. Anyway, look, it's bending fairly evenly, so I'm, I would be happy to progress that further. So across here is that when a knife? A I, knife. I want to see that too. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say it's just a knife cut, but it will probably have to be addressed and taken out, otherwise it could develop. So something to watch out for where there's a particular extra bit of bend, like a hinge in a bow, it's called, uh, is chrysal frets or compression fractures. So imagine the fibers are all laying nicely and then they bend too much and they crush together. And then they cause a little zigzaggy silvery kind of line. And then the temptation is to scrape it away and cut it away and carve it out. But if you do that, you weaken it further and you make more of them. I'm just gonna brace up the longbow now. Bracing height, pretty good for a, t a, a partially tilled bow. It has a fairly even tiller, I mean, at bracing height anyway, bearing in mind there's extra bend there 
but that's okay because it's in the stave already. You've got to allow for the, for the fact that the stave isn't straight when you have it relaxed. And I already see, I've sort of seen that earlier, so it sort of curves up to the knot and then down again. So when you're tillering a bow like this, a characterful bow with some stuff going on in the, the timber, you've got to bear that in mind. Uh, and then when you get to full draw, it should just sort of balance out and even out, usually. Deeper stacked, which means the distance from the back to the belly is a bit more compared to the flat bow. And that adds more power more quickly. My inches are marked at 20, yeah, I've got 20 there, 26 and 28 there. So come back to there, bang! Oh no, that was just me. Right, okay, this is the opposite thing happening where there's bend here and here and a bit less bend to the tips. Which is fine, that's all, that's like a work in progress. But it's pretty nice and even at 20 inches, I like that. I won't hold it there too long. And then I also like to move it, bend it and like see it moving as well. So I'll do a bit of exercise. That's to exercise the fibres when you're tailoring and making, but sure, you've done that already, haven't you? <laughs> of course you have. In accidental? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, what is that? Yeah, incidental, accidental exercise tillering, but I'm doing it now for you anyway, so it's fine. If you look, yeah, you can look at the bend in it. Ah, it's nice, it's a good even bend and it's a bit stronger. So, a little bit stronger at, at, at that draw length. Now, the question is, can I draw to full draw or will I just damage it irreparably? So, um, let's go and shoot them. Nice one. <laughs> nice one. Oh. This is the fun part. Yeah. These were made by Boyd Rankin. Look we can at use these a blunt things. as well. That might be better. That might be our arrow, the blunt, the Mongolian blunt. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's the stump shooter. We can shoot Natural Julius glass. with this. Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> that's why I brought it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's quite short too, is it? Yeah, so that's, that's, that's nice. actually better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's amazing. That's What's good. this? Is this just to piss off your neighbor? Or? Yeah, so no, it's a target arrow, a Mongolian target arrow. Okay. Uh, made in Mongolia probably by Mongolians and it's interesting as itself it's got a horn blunt on the end with a leather little pad uh, and that's for shooting into a basket which they use for targets oh. I'll also show you the medieval style ones as well you want to see them a random selection uh, have we got any that are suitable for target shooting well yeah any of the bodkins would be like that one look push pull like this right into my instep of my foot yeah and then pull up like against your hip actually palm flat on the back here look at my palm there and then roll the finger around the knock straight up full draw i wouldn't i wouldn't either no so i'm going to part draw do you know what i'll do i'll draw to where the paint is and then we can do the same yeah yeah and that's a bit more than 20 inches as i'm drawing this it's not so much about where the arrow goes that has a part of it but what is the tiller of the bow at this stage is it nice and even, or is there places where work needs to be done? Right, here goes. Flat bow, shot number one. About there. <laughs> so I, aimed, I immediately felt that I had to aim up to get the distance on that. By the looks, uh, it could hold a full draw. But yeah, we, it's shooting nicely enough. Shot number one. First ever shot. Of the deeper, narrower longbow. And I'm going to just draw again, same place to the paint. Because there. I can immediately feel that's a good bit heavier. I don't have to raise up so much to get the distance. I didn't have to at all, I just went there. But what did the tiller look like? Well, that's for the film to pick up. I like the flick in the bottom of that loom. It'd yeah. be nice to steam the top and do the same there. So foot touching the peg, that's part of, uh, you'll get, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, okay, looking at the tiller again. Oh, this is full draw, man, no stress. You could go, you could, yeah. Tiller's nice and even. It's a little bit stiff in the bottom limb there, but that's maybe just the twist in the, in the timber, so we'll ignore that. There's not much more you'd change drastically. Just make this bend a little bit more here. Uh -huh. just about, but not here, not yeah. right, but uh, out here a bit, you know, that bit, yeah. sort of hands width. And, and a bit here. Yes, because that is stiff, but it's also, you've got to be careful of what the original shape was. Yeah. And uh, the shape of the timber. First shot for Dylan with his bow. This, the cat is out of the bag at this point. There you go. Uh, Come on, Alfie. <laughs> You're missing a bit of draw strength. Yeah, yeah, and that's the length of it. I had the same thoughts of doing that. Of shortening? And, yeah, because I was worried that the tips 
would be the weakest part. Yeah, I can see why that would be a thought. But what you find is it's actually mid-limb right. where stuff evolves, okay. usually. Anyway, I had it as a backup. I make it long. Yeah. And I can always make it a bit shorter. Yes. Like, And it's it's quite cool that you say that, that it works well with the flat bows. Right, so which bow am I shooting now? You, you're shooting the long bow? Yeah, but is it mine or is it Julia's? Well, I thought it was yours, but it turns out it's probably not. No, it isn't, no. Is that not? Oh my god. So again, drawing just to the brown paint mark. Yeah, nice. Right, Julius. Shooting time. Shooting time. Questions we came up. Dylan was examining the outer layer. Yeah. It was very porous. I mean, the other ash wood didn't have this. Oh, oh yeah, but that's not hardwood. That? That's just different growth. Very limited growth rings every year. This one has been in the shadow for the last few years. And oh, yeah, it's mainly the... vessels because it's very porous. Oh uh, yeah, so and you're saying that's uh, more early wood. In this type of wood, like ash, if the growth rings are closer together, you have a ratio of more porous early wood. Tight growth rings are what are required for the likes of yew wood, because it's a softwood mm -hmm. of different structure. But for ash, tight growth rings, some people say, can be detrimental, uh -huh. because you have a higher percentage of uh, big channel early wood. Exactly. Uh, for each section. So, yeah. Uh, Dylan was very afraid of this, and me too. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> chopped it all off. So you, I, you, I yeah. see that. Yeah, I don't. I don't often see that delineation in, in ash. This might be very flexible, and this might keep the strength. Yeah. yeah. So let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's think of it like a, a, a laminate. Yeah. <laughs> the bottom limb is bending, probably slightly more, but the, it's fairly even. I like that. You can hear that sort of vibration just after the shot with a string, but it's not too bad. Full draw, full draw, full draw. Full draw, full <laughs> draw. Do you feel confident drawing it further? Yeah, I think so. I but, think but the, the bend is even enough that it wouldn't but damage But I also it really. like to think long term. Yeah, okay, so then slow it down and just... Uh, it's a pretty good bow. I reckon you can progress that nicely. Yeah, you went about two or, two or three inches longer there on the draw length. And it was quicker off the string. He could retrieve the arrow too. What? He'd probably chew it though, wouldn't he? Yeah, it would a little. It's all right, when it's your own arrow. <laughs> I guess don't go so far that you're going to damage it, is the main thing. But that's cool. Yeah. It looks super fine. Yeah, it looks really even. Like, you'll work on the tips and stuff, That's but as it is right now, for the stage it's at, that's, a, that's an excellent tiller. Good work, good stuff. Let's weigh them at 20 inches, let's just see. So, I have a bow scales here, which I can do that with. So, a, a nice yeah. safe 20. And we have... 23.92. 24 pounds draw weight. 20, 20 inches. Yeah. And we can do the same on the other bow now. But what is the estimated poundage then? If I think this, is gonna be, this one's going to be lighter. In, but in full draw, uh, like, yeah. compared to the 20 inch? Uh, Two pounds per inch, don't we? Approximately... Another 20 pounds. Yeah. So then it's 44. Yeah if it doesn't break at this stage yeah yeah, yeah this stage now but, so you might have to retail us some more bits but then it gets lighter again yeah exactly yeah. and also test shooting it will add a bit of set and tillering it as well uh -huh. which is permanent bend which does reduce the overall draw weight and cast of the arrow cast is velocity of the arrow as it leaves the bow and that's why in some you might add a nice bit of deflex into your stave that is to, amazing, yeah. To, so to that reduce is like that bent effect. in the opposite way of the, yeah, of of the, the string. string yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, right, okay, let's see what this comes out to at 20 inches. Uh, it's, a, it's 14. I can feel that. It's also, there's like, there's less material overall, I guess, yeah. But it's also how it's distributed through the bending moment of the bow. This is obviously a bit more powerful than the flat bow. Uh-huh. Uh, and therefore, I can get more distance with it. I can get the arrow further faster and so that's more of a, um, well, it's a heavier bow. Now you started with the same material each of you uh, and one has chosen one route and the other the other route and that's a different design of bow so they won't perform the same. When designing a bow, a flat bow, take the length into consideration it doesn't need to be so long. A flat bow because it's wider you can make it a good bit shorter to have the same level of performance because the resistance to pressure what gives the bow cast is spread out over a wider section 
on the wider cross section of the limb, make it go through a process called piking. You can pike it, which means removing the same amount of material from each tip. So you're effectively shortening the lever from the handle where it doesn't bend, well, where they're bending against each other, and the tip. So if you shorten it a bit, uh, that whole length which is doing the work is reduced, so it has to do more work for the same draw length. Right? With that in mind, it's heavier, and it won't have the same dangers as a deeper, narrower bow would have with chrysal frets and failure points. The reason you need to have a long bow, long, is so that the pressure can be spread over a longer distance and more material. So with those things in mind, uh, it's not quite a fair comparison of the bowyer's skill. But <laughs> if I was going to take one over the other, I would have to say, the big moment, the big reveal, well, it is the longbow for me, as they are right now. And that's the caveat, because you can change that to be more in keeping with the design of a flatboat, so shorter, basically, and then see how they perform. Uh, is that fair? Is that, is that a, a, a fair assessment based on the shooting? I think, I, I think that's a pretty good conclusion. I got a full draw, man. Now, make sure you get this on film. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Wow! <laughs> <Yes>. Full draw. <laughs> he just full draw Friday it. <laughs> so that's the full draw. There you go. You leave Beautiful. Your turn. Hashtag full draw Friday. You take a picture of yourself and put it up on Instagram or everywhere. <laughs> Is that really a thing? Yeah, it's a I big hashtag. Joking, Get then. on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it this Friday. Well, first of all, thanks a lot for helping us out with the material. Yeah. And yeah. all, and especially coming here and showing us and you know actually, you're very welcome i'm happy to be here yeah, and no, to be asked onto your channel it's, and, it's and great. to talk to you guys and see the place in in person for the first time it's really nice yeah nice one yeah, yeah. so i do follow your channel and watch it yeah. and we, i awesome. watch it with alfie as well cool. and we watch it together and it's cool and we enjoy it and especially the ice jumping moment that was <laughs> 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 uh, yeah so um about the bows then maybe like a day and a half to work two days maybe about that for the two of you Amazing progress in that time, first of all, and really well done. Mm -hmm. uh, especially using just the basic hand tools that you did use. And we've just seen Dylan's bow go to full draw of this arrow. Uh, and that's pretty, that was a bit of a risk, but you're happy with that, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe I should do it now and too then. Huh? No, if well, no, it's too, no, no, because that, you, you have a more critical bow, you've got more to take care of because there's not so much width in it. So, uh -huh. you know, it's deeper, so yeah. it can fail harder. Uh, then I would like to have my own conclusion. It depends a bit on what you want. Like it's worth it for the process, but not to get a bow at the end of it. I think there's much quicker ways of of making a bow. Like what I did the last time, I made it one and a half an hour. Mm. Sure, it had the same pattern as this one, mm. <laughs> give or take. Yeah, you know, this obviously one, it's more accurate, I think. Uh, yeah, okay, but like you know, you have to think about like what what the point is of of, of making a bow. I mean, yes. if you have to do this to to catch a dinner, you'd be starved by now, you know? <laughs> you go and get your laughs out of the wood and make a bundle bow that'll last you two weeks, but it'll be it'll be efficient for that time. Exactly, yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I and then but if you do decide this, I would say bring your draw knife, bring your rasp, bring your smoke shave. And I would say with those tools in mind, in particular a draw knife, uh, make yourself a shaving break, which you, you'll have to. Yeah. You, you should definitely have here because that would be a great addition yeah, to the exactly. capsule. Mm -hmm. You didn't like we use those uh, Busher basic tools, or you didn't prefer. And I think for the quality of the pro product, it uh, doesn't really make a difference. It does make it a longer process, mm. true, but it also makes it more accessible for people watching who mainly have those basic tools. Yeah, I really enjoyed the challenge. Nice, me too, me too. Yeah, I've enjoyed coming up and showing all yeah, showing off. How do, how do people find you? Yeah, uh, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, so um, I'm living longbows. I make bows for sale and people are welcome to buy them. And other stuff too, correct? I make arrows and I make wooden things. Living.longbows on Instagram, on Facebook as well. I have a website which is livinglongbows.com. I would say it is a work in progress, uh, but there's a few things up there and a bit of information. Thanks you too, uh, Jack. Yeah. And Alfie, thanks for coming. Hey, 
Coming up on Smooth Fixed Friday, we add the finishing touches to our bows and craft some arrows for a proper shootout. Also check out the roundhouse overnight video during this challenge and consider supporting this content by becoming a patron. This kind of content takes hours of work, especially in the editing. Thanks a lot for your support and see you on the next one.